I'm going to show you how to get started with your PicoDev RGB LED module and a Raspberry Pi Pico. We'll connect them up, get some example code working, and by the end of the tutorial, we'll even be able to control multiple modules, like in my little road intersection here. You can see I've got two traffic lights operating independently. Let's get started. Now to follow along, you'll need a Raspberry Pi Pico with the pin soldered facing downwards a PicoDev RGB LED module and expansion board for Raspberry Pi Pico and a PicoDev cable to connect everything together. Plug your Pico into the expansion board, making sure the USB connector is on the same side as the two pin battery connector. Plug in your PicoDev cable at the bottom and connect your RGB LED module. And for the first example, make sure that the ID switches are off and that the ID jumpers are unsoldered. This is how it should arrive out of the box. And I've just mounted everything to this PicoDev platform to keep it nice and stable. Next, connect to your computer with a USB cable. In this guide's article, find the download MicroPython module section and right click each link, select save link as. I'm going to save all these files into a PicoDev directory under my documents. We're going to be using Thonny for this tutorial. If you've never used Thonny with Raspberry Pi Pico before, check out our guide for that first. In Thonny, navigate to where you've saved your files and connect to your Pico. Select the first file, hold shift, select the second file, right click and upload to, and that will upload all the files to our Pico. Let's open up main.py. This script is ready to run, so press Control R to run, and you'll see we get a red, green, and blue LED. This is a really simple example that just illuminates the first LED to red, the next LED to green, and the last LED to blue. Let's take a look at the code. We import the PicoDev RGB functionality, and we also import a function called wheel. More on that later. We also import sleepms, which is a function to create a delay. We initialize the LED module, and next up we have a bunch of colors defined. These are three element lists that define the mixing of red, green, and blue to create a specific color. Taking a look at this color list, we can see that there's always three colors described, that's red, green, and blue, and we can use values between 0 and 255. That's very common for red, green, blue colors. So 0 would be completely off and 255 would be as bright as possible for that color. We also have a set brightness function, which can be between zero and 255 as well. This sets a scalar for the brightness. If you wanna get really, really bright, you can set this to 255. Finally, at example one, we call LEDs set pixel. And in the first call, we set pixel number zero, which is this first one up the top, to red. We set pixel one to green and pixel two to blue. We need to call leds.show to actually update the physical device with these new colors. After a three second delay, we then call leds.clear, which turns all the LEDs off. Okay, so that should mean that we can change any of these color labels to another color from our list. I'll choose to turn green to magenta, which will change this LED number one right here in the middle. There we have it. It's a nice purple color now. So that's how we can control individual LEDs on our RGB LED module. I'll comment out example one, so I'll highlight everything, press Alt-3 to comment out, and then I'll highlight everything under example two and press Alt-4 to uncomment. Let's give this a run now. There's a couple of things going on here. We have all the LEDs going to the same color and that's being picked out of the color wheel and we're just going around and around the color wheel. We also have the power LED up in the top left turning on and off periodically. We've included this because this is an LED display module and maybe you don't want this LED to be on all the time. It's always on by default, but you can turn it off if you wish. Taking a look at the example, we start off with a couple of state variables. We have a loop counter initialized to zero and the power LED state, which starts as true. Then in an infinite loop, we set C to some color from the color wheel and that's defined by I. So every time we loop, I is going to increment and we'll choose a slightly different color. Wheel accepts an argument in degrees, so I've divided that by 360. Next we call leds.fill and we fill with that color that we picked from the color wheel. You might remember from the previous example where we had to call show, fill will automatically call show for us as well. So that's what's going on with these colorful LEDs. What's going on with the power LED? We take our loop counter I and take the modulo of 100 and query whether that's equal to zero. What that basically means is on every 100th loop, 
we toggle the power LED state by calling power LED state equals not power LED state. So true becomes false, false becomes true. And then we pass that into the functions power LED, which will update the state of the onboard power LED. Finally, we increment our loop counter and there's a small delay. So if I want this power LED to flash really fast, I could turn that into a 10. And now it's blinking 10 times faster. Likewise, if I want my colors to scroll really slowly, I could change this to a 0.1. So now we're incrementing I one tenth of the speed as before. And these colorful LEDs will change their colors very, very slowly and smoothly. So we can see that we can use loops and changing variables to change what the LEDs look like gradually over time. Jump back onto the guide and copy the fade LEDs remix and paste it over everything in main. And now we can run it. Here we have the LEDs just glowing on and off on the red channel. So they gradually get brighter and then dimmer. And we do this in a similar way. We do the regular setups and then in an infinite loop, we have two for loops for X in range 255. So from zero to 255, which is the brightest, we just set the red channel to X. So X will increment all the way up to 255. And then in the next for loop, we have X in range 255 to zero with an increment of negative one. And so we've incremented our LEDs all the way up to 255 and the second loop decrements them down to zero. So this loop will handle the glow on and this loop will handle the glow off. Now it's possible to control multiple RGB LED modules at the same time. Here I have two modules connected to the same Raspberry Pi Pico and I'm able to do this by changing the ID switch on one of them. Our first device is like it's always been for this tutorial with all the switches off. And our second device just has the ID number one switch set to on. Now that both modules have a separate ID set, I've copied the traffic light example from the tutorial and I'm running that in Thony. Now when we initialize our LED modules, I've initialized traffic A as our default settings for the PicoDev RGB LED module. That will be this one with all the switches off. And traffic B is initialized and we pass in an ID argument which is the position of the ID switches. Since we've only set ID one to on, it is the only element in this list that is set to a one. ID two is off, and so the second position has a zero, and both the jumpers on the back are unsoldered, so those positions are zero as well. Now we can control two LED modules just by referring to them by their names. What follows in this loop are more of what we've seen where we're just calling set pixel and show, but this time we get to call set pixel for traffic A and for traffic B independently. This light is green, so traffic flows this way, but now it's turned to red, so traffic flows this way. And you can see that on each light, we transition through amber in the middle. And so there you have it, a bunch of fun examples for the PicoDev RGB LED module. Now, if you'd like to learn more about addressing multiple modules, check out our PicoDev connection guide for smart modules. And if you've made anything cool from these examples or you just have some questions, let us know on our forums. We're full-time makers and here to help. Until next time, catch you later.